You can get amazing results when you drill with high pressure coolant, but most people still have an old fashioned understanding of how a drill works, and they settle for the 1950s performance. Worse yet, your results are completely unpredictable. There are a few simple things that you must do to get many times the speed and tool life. The drill must be indicated to an acceptable runout, less than one thousandths for a three eighth drill and less than five tenths for an eighth drill. Runout numbers are in the technical section of the Chip Blaster website. Use a high quality holder, a shrink fit holder or a collet with a seal disc. The coolant concentration must be at least 8% for normal lubricity coolants and higher for many synthetics. The drill must pass 10 gallons per minute per inch of tool diameter. You can measure the hole diameter and refer to the flow charts in the technical section of the Chip Blaster website. With small drills, make sure the hole is in the secondary grind, because if it is in the primary, the bottom of the hole almost completely stops the flow of coolant. Sometimes drills from the same manufacturer work wonderfully, and a size smaller or larger fails completely. Look at the hole location. You can feed the drills harder and faster than they're used to, but there's no magic to it. Run the same speed that you would use if you were turning. If you would turn with C5 tin coated carbide at 800 surface feet, you can drill at 800 surface feet with the same substrate and coating. Because the chips are thinner and smaller with high pressure coolant, you can usually feed at 150% of the maximum manufacturer's recommendation. It is common to get 1000% increases in productivity if you do things the modern way. This tech tip and lots of other information is available at chipblaster.com. So good luck, do it right, and stay in business.